there we go. So uh, Chris Wright uh, is the Senior Vice President and Chief Technology Officer at Red Hat. He leads the office of the CTO, which is responsible for incubating emerging technologies. He is passionate about open source software, serving as the foundation for next generation IP systems. You have the word, Chris. Now he's gone. Let's give it a second and see if we, at least we saw him and heard him, which is a good sign. There okay. We there we go. Thank you. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Chris Wright, CTO for Red Hat. And I, I really wanted to first thank you for the time. This is, this is a really important discussion. Awesome findings from the study. Uh, thank you to uh, Professor Knut and the entire team for walking us through that. And uh, what, a, what a privilege and an honor to be here today, especially with uh, Commissioner Breton opening, opening up the, the um, conference. So let me pop up some slides which will only take a moment. So goes the theory. Okay. So I wanted to just start off with a, a notion of, uh, you know, who Red Hat is. So I'm not gonna walk you through the statistics here because I think most of you know, but just to share a, a way we think about why we're here. Um, we think open unlocks the world's potential. Uh, that's, this is our vision statement at Red Hat, uh, where, where we've been using open source or the open source development model to build software for, for nearly 30 years now. And in that time, we've used the power of, of open technology, of open standards, and of open collaboration between people and organizations to empower our customers and really to advance the state of innovation for everyone. I often describe open source as the innovation engine for the global IT industry. And today, no one single company can deliver the innovation that collective open source development communities can. If you look just on GitHub alone, there's well over 100 million software projects contributed, by, um, contributed to by something like 56 million developers. And with over 25% of those coming directly from Europe, so, and we heard today the, the billions of, of euros investment, investment into open source technologies coming from Europe directly and, and the, the benefits, the, the economic and, and even social benefits uh, from the study. And as I'll share with you, we've learned that being open and fostering open source solutions and practices is, is really more crucial than ever uh, as new open technologies lead to, to digital transformation. And, COVID-19 has forced many of us to move up our timelines for um, digital transformation with a sense of, of urgency in order to support a remote workforce and, and then from a commercial point of view, our customers' needs. So open technology offers benefits that spans all across all the sectors. So it's definitely driving economic development in the private sector. We, we heard some of that earlier today. Um, it's also being used to solve problems for the public sector and deliver social good. And while you know doing all this in the, in the iterative fashion uh, and enabling things to move more, more rapidly and, and safeguarding independence from vendor or platform lock-in. So take for example, uh, Poland's Agency for Restructuring and Modernization of Agriculture. Uh, they've begun using open source 
and open development, uh, really shifting to a more agile or collaborative work approach. And starting back in, in 2018, the uh, ARMA launched its online payment application with many other services to follow in support of Poland's farming industry. In its first year, 99% of Polish farmers adopted this system. Now, farming is a critical component of the country's economy, employing millions and serving as one of Europe's largest food suppliers. The eVniosek uh, e Plus uh, project is meeting the agency's objectives to build upon an entirely open source architecture so that they can protect themselves against vendor lock-in and align with the goal of developing using their own resources. And uh, Red Hat and our enterprise Linux was at the core of their strategy. Now this approach also met the agency's goal of attracting and retaining skilled workers by bringing development in-house and reducing outsourced solutions. So we'll explore more examples later in the program as James uh, Lovegrove and panelists will provide a, a deeper look into the public sector. If we transition to social good, the, and look, take a look at the World Health Organization, with COVID-19 data refreshing just all the time, almost daily, health workers need to stay on top of the most up-to-date and accurate information. So the World Health Organization recognized the need to continually update practitioners and policymakers and its own staff with the latest health knowledge and, and, and data and evidence. So from the beginning, uh, the World Health Organization was determined to build their platform using open source technology. Uh, and we've seen this repeat in, in other uh, organizations, more, more localized organizations around the world. Uh, they partnered with us at Red Hat to build a, a digital learning experience platform uh, for its WHO Academy training center based on what we would call open hybrid cloud and cloud native technologies. And this platform will include artificial intelligence and virtual reality technology to connect devices and users and data in the learning environment and to support learning through simulations, which I think is, is, a, is a great uh, use of technology. And by using their platform on an open technology framework, the World Health Organization is now better able to adopt emerging architectures and applications and iteratively and incrementally provide real-time value to global health workers. Uh, Red Hat was there with, with our OpenShift platform, which creates a cloud agnostic Kubernetes platform, enabling the World Health Organization to scale their platform without depending on any particular cloud vendor. And of course, we've also seen a huge rise in applications for contact tracing and dissemination of information more generally around COVID. And, and GitHub itself uh, experienced a huge spike in uh, new open source software projects in the April, uh, March, April timeframe last year, uh, directly responding to, to the early phases of the crisis. And Red Hat Associates uh, volunteered and joined these efforts supporting these, these pop-up projects to, to really help the world advance in, in how we coped with the global pandemic. If you look at private industry, uh, the BMW Group was recognized as one of this year's Red Hat's Innovation Award winners. And uh, this is for their efforts to amass the data storage and compute power required to access, analyze, and apply large amounts of data collected to support their automated vehicle initiatives. Uh, the system that BMW developed powered by open source innovation can store enough data to house over 2000 years of 24 by seven HD video recording and the compute capacity to simulate 20 times the total railways of, of, of Europe, uh, all working to build autonomous driving models, which will be pushed out to the edge in connected vehicles while model training happens in these large cloud scale environments. So software, and, and I, we just heard a little bit of this at the, at the end of the panel, software and technologies can only be as good as the people and processes behind them, which is why open collaboration is, is so essential. So you know, let me take a look at a few key areas where, where people and process come to life. First, open standards. The fast 
developing technology ecosystems always face the, the danger of, of fragmentation with competing formats and different implementations that can lead to siloing or, or uh, of technologies and, and basically limited adoption due to lack of interoperability between competing solutions. Uh, Red Hat supports and advocates for standardization, preferably the creation of standards built from open source principles and then backed by the larger IT industry. So it's important to recognize the role of private forums such and consortia such as uh, the W3C or OASIS or the IETF and, uh, and many others in scaling solutions via open standards where much of the work in specifications and software occurs. But access alone to a standard is less valuable than the open ability to contribute to the standard, especially when connected to open source software development. Now, some of these consortia and their initiatives are actually more industry specific, like the Eclipse Foundation's Open Autonomous Driving Accelerator, where companies like Bosch, Siemens, and many others are working together uh, to accelerate autonomous driving. Red Hat recently joined Linux Foundation's uh, ELISA project to support enabling Linux in safety applications such as automotive, where combined with the automotive grade Linux project, we collaborate with partners such as European automakers like BMW, Volkswagen, and, and Mercedes-Benz. And last year, we became a member of the uh, Berlin-based Fireware Foundation and joined with companies like Atos and Telefonica to develop a framework for open solutions for smart cities. So bringing industries together to tackle the largest challenges to help evolve or digitally transform that industry's state of the art through collaboration is the power of open source. Leveraging open standards as well as de facto standards creates a common focus and as a result, a real efficiency to facilitate rapid innovation across entire ecosystems. Now others are, are more technology focused, such as the work we do with our partner SAP and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation to bring Kubernetes and relative, uh, related innovative cloud native technologies to the enterprise. One of the big trends we've seen uh, at, in, is the rise of the open source program office. And we just heard about this, the, uh, the OSPO um, uh, concept. And I really wanted to congratulate the EU for recently establishing its first open source program office designed to complement its 2021 technology strategy. At Red Hat, uh, we've learned that success with open source requires careful planning and consistent effort and steady guidance. It, it really needs to be fostered. Contributing code alone is not enough. We recognize the need for building and supporting internal open source program offices that nurture that organization's open source efforts and guide the internal stakeholders who have questions about open source and serve as thoughtful stewards for communities that the organization is participating in. And you'll hear more later today about uh, OSPOs as an enabling strategy for organizations across all sectors later in today's panel on, on the topic. And the final reflection I, I'd like to make is about how 2020 has impacted much more of the world uh, and, and how we're thinking about collaboration. So, while Red Hat and much of our engineering effort has been through remote work for many years, thanks to the, the distributed nature of, of open source development, the pandemic has forced many companies to completely rethink where and how they manage, work, and hire. New investments in infrastructure and tools, often based directly on open source, have accelerated as the industry is coping with distancing and, and finding new and better ways to work at a distance with success, leading many to rethink their workplace and workforce of the future. And companies who previously would not have hired a developer who could not come to the office every day have found that unexpected changes in their hiring practices would bring a diversity of talent and opportunities for innovation that were previously um, untapped. Our world faces a long 
list of challenges requiring us to work across borders, across cultures, and across competing economies. The key to a prosperous and more inclusive society lies in the ability to collaborate. Emerging technology can be enabling technologies, reducing barriers and increasing opportunities to participate while empowering citizens to retain privacy, agency, and autonomy. Two emerging technologies powered by open source are changing the way we think about computing. We're seeing open source unlock a set of technologies with the potential to decentralize computing and place access closer to the individual. This is the rise of edge computing and the deployment of 5G networks. The rollout and adoption of 5G technologies is a great example of a rich and evolving ecosystem. Uh, Red Hat works together with partners like Ericsson and Nokia and consortia such as uh, the ORAN Alliance and the newly formed Aniket project to develop new and open models for building 5G radio access networks and validation models for the broad 5G ecosystem, leveraging open source and open standards. The widespread adoption of 5G technologies has the potential to make connectivity an even more powerful tool, transforming really how we, we work and live. 5G provides higher bandwidth, so more data, lower latency, so you're closer to the data, and more connections, so more devices. And this opportunity is more than just the mobile networks that much of the world has come to rely upon. It will touch on and, and really revolutionize a wide array of sectors, including automotive and connected vehicles, telemedicine services that connect patients to quality health care, regard, uh, regardless of location, manufacturing and supply chain, as well as the prospect for smart cities to reach their potential. And to ensure this potential is achieved, the rollout of 5G relies on open interfaces and open source driven technologies. So 5G must be open such that a diverse pool of suppliers can compete and develop the most innovative and secure and cost-effective products. Compared to earlier generations uh, of networks, 5G moves from a bespoke hardware-centric solution to a more software-centric approach that embraces cloud-native design principles to enable the scale and agility needed to adjust rapidly to evolving market needs. And if you look inside most of the components in the 5G network, you'll find open source software. So an important corollary to the use of open source software, open interfaces and open standards can ensure that all the components of a 5G network from edge to core are interoperable. And that makes not only for a better experience, but also uh, creates uh, better competition. And together, the combination of open interfaces and open source, especially when driven by effective hybrid cloud strategies will enable uh, the, the full potential of 5G. So it's the edge where the magic is happening and millions of devices live on the edge waiting for instruction and the opportunity to serve our needs and define our environment and satisfy our curiosity and improve the human condition. The future is waiting to be defined by our ability to move technical capability to the point of relevancy, to the point of impact, where it matters the most. The future is open and open unlocks the world's potential. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. On time, actually, this is outstanding. Yeah, uh, yeah very good. Um, I see there are a bunch of um, uh, comments and see a lot of activities in, in the chat and everything. I just one last thing because uh, I wanted to ask you right before we go over to the next one: Is there, uh, you know, as a long-standing contributor to the Linux kernel, which um, I mean, I hear sometimes the world's most successful open-source software pro uh, project, but I do think it might perhaps be the most successful software project. Period. Uh, <laughs> If you take with the, that experience and you think of all the examples that you mentioned, could, could you would you be able to boil down to like say one key driver behind such open innovation? What drives uh, this process? I, I have to say my my favorite answer to a question like that is my one key driver are these three key examples. Um, so it, it's it's a little more than just one thing, but I think the the broad part is the, the openness and the ability for anybody to contribute. I got involved just because of that. I was able to dig under the hood and see how it worked. And I was immediately um, just impassioned by the, the impact that I could make. And the cross collaboration across you know, communities, across 
companies around the globe focused on the technology itself. So you're kind of putting aside all of the different um, uh, potential issues, trying to evolve technology, I think is really what, what is so powerful. And I thought you were saying, going to say, it's not only in the world, but in the universe, because of course, Linux has gone to Mars. Um, but uh, it, it, it is, it's amazing what we can do together when, when we focus on a common mission, openness, recognize that there are humans involved and that openness is what's necessary to create trust and it's trust that creates the, the evolution, uh, successful evolution of, of technology. Okay, well, thank you very much. And rhymes, I think, a lot with the, with the discussions we're seeing in the chat as well, just to focusing on the networks of collaboration and the people meeting and working together. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Um...